we are going to start now the next chapter of class 9th mathematics it is chapter 5 euclid's geometry so we have divided this chapter in two lectures so in the first part we will talk about some basic definitions and in the second part we will discuss some theorems related to the given definitions the first definition we have it is the definition of axioms and postulates so for you both these terms these will be same meaning of both axiom and postulate will be same for you earlier the word postulate this word postulate it was used in context to geometry but nowadays both axiom and postulate they are same they can be used interchangeably so what is the meaning of axiom or postulate is we are saying suppose we are given a statement a straight line may be drawn from any one point to other point this is just a statement we are saying that if two points are given and we are talking about a line is drawn from we can always draw a line from this point a to this point b we can always draw a line from a to b so this is just a statement which is true so these kind of statements which need not any proof and they are true they are self-evident so these kind of statements are called the axioms or the postulates so euclid geometry it is basically defined in terms of some postulates so these seven postulates are given over here these are euclid's axiom you can say or euclid's postulates you can say so we discuss them one by one and these are some basic postulates on which the things are developed the main theory is developed so the first postulate we have over here it is things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another we are saying we are having two things say a we are having things which are equal to the same thing we are, we are having something a and we are saying two things are there one is b and one is c so we are saying if b is equal to a and c is equal to a then b will be equal to c so we need not to prove all these things we are just saying these are the postulates now the second is if equals are added to equals the whole are equal what it means equals are added to equal means if suppose i am saying this is one line and this is another line and both of these lines these are equal i'm talking about a b and this is c d both these lines length of both these lines they are same so we are saying if equals are added to equals now we have a line say x y and i am adding this line to both these lines it means what we are talking about is we have considered this line and we are adding this line over here similarly we are adding this line over So this new length we will get the new length we are talking about is this x to b and suppose this point is x dash to d we are saying x to b the length of x to b and length of x dash to d that is also same this is what the second postulate is saying. Now the next postulate we have if equals are subtracted from equals then the remainders are equal so same thing we are talking over here if this length x y we subtract from both of these this is suppose x dash y this is x dash y so if we subtract from both of these the length that is left that will be equal similarly in the fourth one we are saying things which coincide with one another are equal to one another coincide with one another means we are saying if two suppose i am talking about the straight lines again if two straight lines are there we place this straight line on this line and they both coincide means they overlap each other then we are saying both of these these are equal next is the whole is greater than the part whole is greater than the part means if we are saying again i am considering suppose this straight line this straight line i am talking about so if i consider a part of it we are saying that 
whole is greater than is whole is greater than the part means if the length of this is x and length of this is y then y will be less than x next is things which are double of the same thing are equal to one another is suppose i am saying there is a number x there is something x and there is another thing y and we are saying 2x is equal to y and some third thing is there z and 2z is equal to y it means x and z they will also be equal and things which are half of the same thing are equal to one another similarly if it is x by 2 is y and z by 2 is y then also x and z they are equal so these are the axioms we are talking about we need not to prove these statements these are just the axioms we have axioms means these are self evident true statements so these are these seven axioms these are basically the axioms of euclid symmetry so based on these seven axioms euclid has proved some theorems proved some results and the as we have studied the coordinate geometry similarly there is euclid geometry and these are that euclid geometry is basically depending upon these seven axioms so as an example we have mentioned over here if the area of a triangle a triangle is given to us if the area of this triangle is equal to the area of a rectangle and the area of this rectangle is equal to the area of this square we are saying area of this triangle is equal to area of this rectangle and it is area of this rectangle is equal to this then the area of triangle will be equal to area of the square next magnitude of the same kind can be compared and added or subtracted but magnitudes of the different kinds cannot be compared so what it means is suppose i am talking about that a person can run 2 km and second thing i am talking about is a person can drink 3 liters of water so can we come on basis of these two things that he can run 2 km and he can drink 3 liters of water we cannot compare two persons so same thing we are talking over here if we are having something x suppose its units is meters and we are having something y and its units is say that uh, this is units for length suppose something y we have calculated it is in kg so we cannot say that x is equal to y we cannot compare we cannot equate these two values compare over here means we are talking about x is equal to y or x is less than y or x is greater than y because we cannot compare these values because their units are different these are some basic things that we have to keep in mind third everything equals itself everything equals itself means if suppose i am talking about something over here suppose i am talking about this box then it is equal to itself and last part we have if a is greater than b then there exists another quantity c such that a is equal to b plus c so these are some illustrations that we have given over here so these are some basic statements you can read this and you will be able to understand what is the meaning of these statements now next we have is the euclid's five postulates so the first postulate we have is a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point so what this thing means is that if one point is given to us then we are saying we can draw a line from this point say p i am talking about to any point q and moreover this line is unique unique means there is only one such line now the second postulate says a terminated line can be produced indefinitely these are just the statements we need not to prove them these are just the statements we are saying a terminated line can be produced indefinitely so what we are saying is that a line is given line segment is given to us a and b we can extend this line in 
definitely you can extend it on the both sides uh, from A also and from B also. Third postulate is a circle can be drawn with any center and any radius if a plane is given to us. We are saying we can, can consider any point over here and a circle we can draw a smaller circle, we can draw a larger circle. So what we are basically saying that we can consider center anywhere and the radius of the circle R we are talking about it can have any value. And the fourth postulate is all right angles are equal to one another we are saying suppose these two lines are intersecting it is right angle over here and we are talking about these two lines are there and it is right angle over here so if we measure this angle and this angle the measure of both these angles it is same so this postulate says that all right angles are equal to one another now the next axiom says that if a straight line falling on two straight line, we are talking about two straight lines are given to us and a straight line is there which is passing through these two or falling means passing through these two straight lines, straight lines are there so it means they are infinite in length. So we are saying if a straight line falling on two straight line makes the interior angle on the same side of it taken together less than two right angles over here two right angle means we are talking about 180 degree their sum is basically sum is 180 degree we are saying if the interior angles it is making on the same side of the line so we are talking about these two angles and we are suppose this angle is a or as mentioned in the diagram we write it is this angle is g this point is g and this angle is h this point is h so we are saying the measure of the sum of these two angles if it is less than 180 degree then what the statement says is if we extend these lines indefinitely if we extend these lines indefinitely then where these lines will meet they will meet on the side on which the sum of the angles is less than 180 degree. So if suppose we are talking about that two straight lines are there which are parallel to each other then a line is falling on them then the sum of these two angles is basically 90 degrees this is equal to 90 degrees. So we are not considering this case right now because these lines will be parallel then then they will not intersect. If suppose I am talking about the lines are like this we have drawn another line over here we are saying now the sum of these two angles these two angles the sum of these two angles is less than 180 degree it means the lines will meet on the right hand side now because on the right hand side the angle is less than 180 degree now this postulate this was further modified and it was modified in this form that if suppose a line is given to us suppose this line L is given to us and a point P is given to us then we are saying we can always find a line M passing through P and parallel to L you can always find a line L M which is parallel to this line L and it is passing through the point P now the next definition we have it is statement so a sentence which can be judged by a true or false value is called a statement so examples are given over here the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degree so this is a true statement you can tell whether it is true or it is false the sum of angles of a quadrilateral is 180 degree it is a false statement but it is a statement it is a statement it is a statement although it is a true statement and this is a this is a true statement we are talking about and this is a false statement but both of these are statements but if we are talking about x plus 10 is greater than 5 
suppose I substitute x is equal to 0, we are getting 10 is greater than 5. Now, if I am substituting x is equal to minus 10, I will get 0 is greater than 5. So, for x is equal to 0, this statement is true. For x is less than, for x is equal to minus 10, this statement is false. So, there is no fixed value whether this statement is true or false. So, we are saying this is not a statement. We are saying this is not a statement because we cannot tell whether it is true or it is false. Next is the definition of a theorem. So, whenever we are make, giving some statement, we need to give some proof and a statement that requires the proof is called a theorem. So, if we are talking about the sum of angles around a point is 360 degree. So, either this will be true or it will be false. But we have to give the proof in both the cases. The sum of angles of a triangle is 180 degree. Either it is true or this statement is false. But we have to give the proof over here. So, these kind of statements which require the proof, which requires the proof, they are called the theorem. And establishing the truth of a theorem is known as proving the theorem. If we are establishing the truth of a theorem, it is called proving the theorem. Next is corollary. A statement whose truth can easily be deducted from a theorem is called its corollary. So, what it means is that statement is we are given some sentence which is either true or false. Now, if we are saying it is true, we have to give the proof. If we are saying it is false, we are saying we have to give the proof. And such kind of statements for which we have to give the proof, they are called the theorems. Now, suppose we have proved some theorem. We have proved some theorem. Then what will happen? We are saying another statement is given to us. Another statement is given to us and the proof of is this statement, this new statement, the proof of this new statement follows from this theorem. The reason for the proof of this statement we are saying because this theorem is true. So, this statement is true. So, such kind of statement is called a corollary. So, first thing we have statements. Statements are those which are either true or they are false. Second, we have theorems. Theorems are which require the, the statements which require the proof. They are called the theorems. Then, we are saying some statements are there whose proof can be made from some theorem. They are called the corollary. Next, we have some terms related to geometry. So, the first term we come across in the geometry is the term point. So, point is any exact location. We are given a plane. Any exact location on that plane, it is called the point and it is represented. A point is represented with a dot. So, we are saying P is a point. So, generally point it is represented with capital letters. So, in this case, you suppose this is the plane we have. We are saying this is the point P. So, when we draw this, we are representing it with a dot, but it is just a location. It is just the pin point we are talking about. Next is the definition of line segment. So, this is not, uh, you can say the definition. This is the some terms we are talking about. So, the line segment, it is the straight path between two points A and B is called the line segment. So, we are saying two points are given to us. One point is A, another point is B. And if we talk about the straight path between these two, that is the line segment. So, line segment AB will be represented by AB and it is bar over there. The points A and B are called the endpoints of the line segment. And a line segment has a definite length. Whenever we are talking about a line segment, it has a definite length. And the distance between the two points A and B, it is called the length of line segment AB. 
सो इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ए बी बार और वी आर राइटिंग बी ए बार सो एज ए लाइन सेगमेंट बोथ ऑफ दीज रिप्रेजेंट द सेम लाइन सेगमेंट इट इज मैं दैट ए बी बार और बी ए बार वी आर राइटिंग बोथ ऑफ दीज रिप्रेजेंट द सेम लाइन सेगमेंट नो नेक्स्ट इज इफ ए लाइन सेगमेंट इज गिवन टू अस ए बी एंड वी एक्सटेंड दिस लाइन सेगमेंट इन वन डायरेक्शन सपोज वी आर एक्सटेंडिंग इट फ्रॉम बी देन इट बिकम्स ए रे सो वी हाउ वी रिप्रेजेंट ए रे इट इज ए बी एंड इट इज एक्सटेंडेड टूवर्ड्स बी सो वी राइट इट लाइक दिस दैट इट इज द रे ए बी लाइन सेगमेंट वॉज ए बी was like this now the ray is ab and it is arrow on it and this arrow towards b represent that it is extended towards b so this is basically we are saying this is this keeps on going like this so it has infinite length or we are saying it has no definite length as it has no end on the right hand side and what basically we are saying we cannot represent a ray on a paper because paper is finite it has some boundaries but ray does not have a boundary on the if we are talking about this particular ray ab it does not have a boundary on the right hand side so it keeps on going on the right hand side similarly you can draw the ray uh, you can extend this ray on the left hand side and we are writing it is ab like this so this is also a ray next if the points a and b are given we have joined those two points we are saying it is line segment we have extended it in one direction say b we are saying it is a ray if we also extend it on the other direction we are saying it is a line so we have started with the definition of a line segment we have defined ray and then we have defined line so similarly line has no end point ray has one end point ray has one end point whereas line has no end points and it is also it does not have any length next is the incidence axioms on lines so it is a line contains infinitely many points so if we are talking about any line is given to us suppose this line is given to us so we are saying how many points are there on this so you can draw how many points are there infinitely many points are there on this line second is through a given point infinitely many lines can be drawn so we are considering this is the point p we have then how many lines we can draw this is l1 l2 l3 l4 so on so you can draw as many lines as we want from this point p so basically we are saying we can draw infinitely many infinitely many means for you infinitely means we are talking about 1 2 3 4 we keep on going like this and we can find the next and next and next number so we are saying where uh, what is the length of this the term used over here it is infinite the length is infinite means that it keeps on going like this there is no number we can find over here Suppose the last in the number I am saying there is no n over here, the number we cannot find for that that is called the infinite. Now the next axiom we have it is that one end only one line can be drawn one and only one line can be drawn. We are talking about. which passes through two given points a and b we are saying if two points are given to us then we can only draw one line through these two points similar kind of thing we have also talked when we are talking about uh, drawing the uh, equation in two variables on the graph so over there i have mentioned that you must con consider more than two points because with two points we always get a straight line but if three points are there then we have seen over there if we commit a mistake we find that they will not lie on that particular line in most of the cases it is like this so the next definition we have it is collinear points so we are saying three or more points are said to be collinear 
if they all lie on a line we are talking about example we have given over here the point a b and c are given and we are saying we can find a line on which it passes through all these points then these three points these are collinear but if i am talking about the points p q and r then i cannot find a line which pass through all these three points a single line i cannot find which pass through all these three points so we are saying p q r r not collinear next is the intersecting lines so two lines having a common point are called intersecting lines so if two lines are given to us and they have a common point in between them then those two lines are called the intersecting lines these are the definitions we have so when we are talking about two lines we are talking about the intersecting lines if more than three lines they pass from one particular point then they are called the concurrent lines the next definition we have it is concurrent lines we are saying if more than three or more lines they pass through the same point we are saying three or more lines which pass through the same point p then those lines they are called the concurrent lines so the basic difference between intersecting and concurrent is for the definition of the in intersecting lines we are saying we are talking only about the two lines and when we are talking about the concurrent lines we are moving talking about the three or more lines so they are passing from a given point next is the definition of a plane so plane is a surface such that every point of the line joining any two points on it lie on it so what we mean to say is if suppose i am talking about a surface first i am considering about this plane surface and i am saying i am considering any two points on it and i can find a line which is joining these two points this is true for every two points consider any two points over here we can consider any two points over here for every two points we can find a line joining those two points so that is called a plane now suppose i am talking about the surface of a ball so on this surface what will happen i consider two points i cannot find a line on this surface i on this surface i cannot find a line which is passing it lies on this surface and which passes through these two points so this is not a plane so plane is we consider any two points on that plane for all two points not any two points we are saying for all two points we can find we can join those two points with a straight line so some examples of the plane are smooth wall we are talking about and the surface of a smooth table or a smooth blackboard or a sheet of paper all these are planes but the basic difference over here is that all these examples that we are given these are basically the finite planes they have a boundary if i am talking about a wall it has a boundary but when we are talking about a plane it is again infinite in all the direction it does not have a boundary just like a line we are talking about it does not have a boundary it is infinite in all the direction so this is mentioned over here the surfaces are limited in extent but geometrical plane extend endlessly in all the directions now next is the definition of parallel lines we are saying two lines l and m in a plane are said to be parallel if they do not have any point in common and we write parallel lines as l is parallel to m so these lines are represented over here we are saying two lines are given to us and there is no point common to between these two these are line basically means they are infinite in length but they have no common point in the finite plane then these are called the parallel lines an interesting thing to note over here is that what we generally say is that parallel lines meet at infinity so in the finite plane finite plane means the definition might uh, get confusing for you but i am just telling you for the information sake that finite plane means uh, 
we are saying that we are not considering infinity as some value over here. Uh, these, these these things are beyond your scope, uh, I think. But what we generally you must consider this line over here like this that parallel lines meet only at infinity. And when we are talking about the definition of parallel line over here, we are saying that they have no point in common. So basically we are talking about they have no point in common in the finite plane. If you consider any finite plane, then they have no point in common. You need not to write this line as they def in the definition, but this is just I am telling you for the information sake. Now the next thing we have is number of lines passing through two given points. So we are talking about that uh, in earlier also we have studied this axiom that if two points are given to us A and B, we are saying from A we can draw infinitely many points. Now passing, we are saying through a, we can draw infinitely many lines. Infinitely many lines means you keep on drawing the lines, you will you can draw next line, then next line, then next line. Then this process will never the process will the process of drawing or finding lines through A may never end. What infinitely means that if you uh, start finding the lines, you will find next line, you will find next line and this process will go on forever. Similarly, if we are talking about the point B, we can find infinitely many points. But if we are saying, if we are trying to find the line passing through these two points A and B, then there is only one line. So, if we are saying a line passing, uh, the lines passing through A, there are infinitely many lines. But if we are talking about two points A and B and we are saying line passing through the point A, B, it means we are talking about only one line. There is no other line that we can find. 